afternoon guys, hope you're well. Same process as ever with Max on either side. We'll set an embargo part way through, actually towards the end for the Sundays uh, at 10.30 on Saturday evening. Simon, please. Hi, Pep. Um, first of all, could you just update us on, on Kevin De Bruyne, please, and if he'll be fit? He fits today a little bit better, but uh, not yet. Uh, two years off, tomorrow we're training and we'll see. So he could he could be involved, but he could be. Um, I know it's very early in the season, but what what can you learn about your team, about Arsenal, by playing a game of this magnitude at this point? Always have been a tight games last years, uh, apparently because I think we are a good team, but they are good too. Uh, they do many many good things in all the aspects, when high pressing and defending deep and transitions and. Uh, it's a complete, absolutely complete team. That's why I have been the biggest rival in the last two seasons. And uh, yeah, early age, early stage of the season, I would say. So nothing more than you know the mood for the next games, uh, the influence for the next games. But in terms of table and anything, it's not much important. It will be important when we will go to to London in the second part of the season. Hi, Pat. Obviously, Arsenal have been one of your closest challenges in recent times. Do you feel that they are at their strongest now that they've ever been when you've been going head to head? Every season is stronger, yeah. Depth squad and add more and more players and top top quality, yeah. Every season is, is even better and even better. What have you seen as a key development in Mikel Arteta's side then that makes you believe that they are? You can ask him. Because if I say something, they will say that I'm playing mind games or something like that. Uh, always I have a highly opinion about him, his team. Everybody knows that he grew up as a team year by year. So there's no doubt about that. And both years have been close, but we have been so strong as well. And uh, still we are strong and uh, they're looking for, for the game. You can play mind games if you want to. No, I'm not good on that. Thanks. Yeah. When you won the title last season, Rodri was asked what the difference between City and Arsenal was, and he said he felt it came down to mentality. Uh, I think when he played in the March, um, he said, um, I saw them and said, ah, oh, these guys, they don't want to beat us, they just want to draw. And he says, that mentality, I don't think we would do it the same way. Do you feel there's still a difference mentality-wise? No. You don't agree with Rodri and, mm -mm. and stuff there. You think, mm -mm. Uh, and Arsenal, you think there's been a growth then in where they're at mentally? But not now, four years ago. No. Uh, hi, Pep. Um, in recent years, we've seen quite a lot of high-scoring games between the teams at the top of the table. Last year, you and Arsenal, it was 1-0 and 0-0. Do you think that's maybe the way things are going to go more, or are you expecting something similar? Similar. And is that, a, do you, you feel a sort of trend in football back towards those top games being really, really tight? To score goals, in the, you can score from many different aspects. In the set pieces, it's not easy because they are so tall, taller than us. <coughs> in the transitions, her backwards are quicker than our transitions offensive. And when we are able to set them back, and they are so strong defensively, they accumulate a lot of players that the modern football, the strikers forget about it to go to the strikers, they go to other holding midfielders. So the gap between the spaces, we saw against Inter. So they defend the space, they have incredible defensively with the runners in the channels inside, being defensive with the people in the middle. So Saliba and Gabriel, they are incredible focus with just with Erling all the time. So it's, it's not one against one, it's always two against one, sometimes three against one. Um, so that's why it's difficult to, to attack them. So they didn't, I think in 24, they didn't lose away. I think uh, they draw just one game against us, uh, they won it. So it's not just one game or two games. There are many games, they are be solid, consistent in that. Uh, they don't concede goals and they didn't, the opponents create much options of that. So that's why you have to try to read well the way we have to do it. And uh, in the same time, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to to play the game and in every game is a chance to get in better or play better or do it better than the game before. And as much you play when the opponent, they are consistent and doing similar things, always you have a chance to improve some aspects. So 
it's a chance for us. We play at home, and hopefully we can do a good performance. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mikel said on Wednesday that uh, his captain, Martin Odegaard, is going to be out for a period of time. And how do you think his absence will impact the game on Sunday? I'm so sorry for him. Always I like to play with uh, the biggest, the toughest squad. Of course, he's an important player, but uh, when year by year, Arsenal is getting better it's because they invest a lot with the depth squad, you know, to have more players ability when you have during the long, long season, you have problems with the injured suspensions and bad forms or whatever. And always you have a depth squad helps you to notice. But he's a captain from Arsenal and everybody knows how important and how good player and exceptional player he is. And also there's been some talk in the, before the game now that um, you played home against Inter on a Wednesday while Arsenal had to go to Bergamo, Atalanta for the away game on first day uh, with the difference in restitution and uh, all these kinds of things. What is your take on that? It's an advantage, but I'm going to make a list in the last six years how many times we were in disadvantage against the tough opponents when we have less days of recovery. I have a huge list to show you, but of course it's a little bit of advantage. Hi, Pep. Um, Arsenal signed Raheem Sterling on the deadline day last year. I think, it, I think it sort of came as a bit of a surprise to some people, but what will he bring to their squad? Is obviously playing. Well, I hear Mikel that said it was a surprise for him as well. He didn't expect to, to hire uh, Raheem. So I wish him all the best. I said many times for all the players that behave unbelievably in this club that help us unbelievably to be who we are, to where we are. So we cannot understand the first period, the first years. In my tenure here, in our tenure here, in our time here with Adrahim, uh, so have been so important. I wish him all the best. Of course, I'll prefer to perform well tomorrow on Sunday, but of course, I wish him all the best. Pep, I know you've been an advocate for the highest quality games and for ensuring players get enough rest and recovery. Rodri came out with comments saying players are probably closer to striking than ever with the increased amount of games. And then there have been a lot of other players who've come out and echoed his sentiments. Just wanted to get your feelings on that. Well, I'm agree with you, maybe for the first time, that, uh, that uh, many, many voices are talking about the players. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. If something is going to change, always ha must come from the players. The only ones can change something is about the organization to take a voice and do something that business can be without managers, can be without sporting directors, can be without media, can be without uh, owners, but without the players, cannot be played. So they only have uh, power to do it with them. So, and also I'm pretty sure they do it for me a justice game to be a more attractive game. And that's the reason why I think not just Rodgers, you know, many, many players, not just I would say not just in these countries, you know, all around the world, the people are starting to talk. Yeah, we'll see. Hi, hey, Pep. You've, um, you've not lost at home now since the Brentford game in November 2022. You've not lost at the Etihad oh, yeah. in the league since um, since the Brentford game, just before the, the World Cup. I don't like this type of questions. <laughs> you, you, did it, you, did it, you did it against Brentford, look what happened. <laughs> So no, I, I, I advise you to change the subject. <laughs> you have time. Right. So there's okay. no, no particular reason why you want to state that why you're, you're playing so well at home? I know you win matches away, obviously. Uh, I, I mean, listen, I had the feel, of course, it's a good record. To win the Premier League that we won in the last years, four in a row, you have to make incredible results at home, incredible results away. Otherwise, you cannot win. So the contenders we had in Liverpool and, and Arsenal in the last years is above 90 points. So I remember 18, 19s, the people don't do 90 points. So, so we have to do a lot of points at home and in the bad moments win games, in the bad performance win games, and on both sides. In Etihad, in a way from Etihad. Hi, Pep. Obviously, Phil was missing over the international break. He's come back now. How, has, he, has, he, has he benefited from that break? I know, appreciate Who, you Phil? was ill. Phil Foden, yeah. Every, every, every player needs break, uh, rest, and and have uh, some disturbing in, uh, in the last weeks. But uh, yeah, he played good 45 minutes the last game and was the best player in the league last season. So of course we need him uh, to make competition and fight with the other midfield players or other wingers. And yeah, it's important he's back and he played good minutes. And unfortunately, the final decision was not a little bit more calm, you know, to take it. But yeah, it's, 
his intensity and pressing and and his movements in the small pockets is is one of the best of the world. So that's why we are very pleased. He's pleased. You can imagine how pleased I am that he's back. Is he ready to play 90? Yeah, week? I think so. One more before the embargo, guys, with Simon, just in front of you. Hi, Pep. I know you said it's not as important this game as the, the one in at Arsenal later in the season, but with the chance to go five points ahead... If... No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying it's so important. Um, you know, take it, it's important in the game against Arsenal. In, in terms of you're going to win or lose the Premier League, it's yeah. not. Right? After five games, never is important. But if we don't think uh, Arsenal, with the quality they have, uh, is not important, we'll be wrong. But I mean, we will certainly make a lot of it if you know whoever wins. Um, is it something that you sort of lean into or try and sort of get the players not to think about? About the result, about yeah. the five points ahead. Yeah. Of course. Why should I tell them? They know it. Mm. So they see a table. Uh, two in front. You win five. Yeah. <clears throat> so we draw two. Uh, so they know it. But this, I think, is not a motivation. Oh, guy, you have to win to have five points in front in a five fixture. So. It's just to do a good game, what you have to do. And of course, there are many aspects because sometimes they set back, sometimes they make high pressing, they might sustain this high pressing for a long time. Sometimes they sustain a long time behind him back and you know, try to avoid it, uh, set pieces because the yeah, I think is statistically, I don't think statistically is the best team in the world. But the world in, in terms of corners freak is how benefit they were, how good they work. So we have to yeah many things have to pay attention